It's your boy ConcertViz34, and today I do want to talk about some of the recent Dave Matthews Band Leg 2 Summer Tour 2018 shows. We got two this weekend in Inglewood, Colorado. It is not the same as Inglewood, California. <laughs> it's a little bit more naturey and nicer of a, of a town slash city. Uh, but anyway, uh, we want to talk about the two shows that uh, we got this weekend. And I want to also compare these shows to the last show that we got in, in Orange Beach, Alabama, and also get into talking about um, one of the things I think that should possibly be looked at for future shows or future tours with the state of Dave Matthews as far as his voice um, and the entire band in general, their energy, their age, and some changes that they can make for the tour um, next year or in future years. So let's start off with the show I actually listened to on Sirius XM Radio, uh, Sirius XM Channel 30, which is Dave Matthews Band Radio, at least till I believe the end of the month. Or not the end of the month, it's going to be going through the Gorge weekend. Um, and then I believe they will shut the lights off. Uh, they will turn off the red light on some rocks and ish but first show back sounded amazing and as i've complained about previous xm shows that they they took from the the pre the older uh archive of shows for 2018 you know like the alabama show this show is completely uh opposite of, of the alabama show sound wise and vocally as well for Dave, um, he sounded great. And the first surprise of the evening is song six, Time of the Season. It's been covered. Uh, last time it was covered was in 2007, but they have that cover uh, there of, I believe that's the zombie song. Uh, very popular, you know, song in, in popular culture and as far as uh, it's been sampled a lot in hip hop. A lot of hip hop artists, I, I've, or hip hop I've listened to, I've heard it sampled a couple of times. Um, but that was the first highlight of the show. Um, I was, you saw on my Twitter at ConcertViz34, I, I recorded a little bit of it. The reason I know, knew it was coming is because my phone is ahead of the DMB Hub app, tips me off of what's coming next. So I was like, I gotta record this, this is gonna be dope. But wow, uh, great to have Buddy Strong with the band for a song like this. Dave sounded great. Uh, harmonies sounded great on that song. Liberation to start off leg two. Um, you get, you know, there's Sledgehammer, which again is amazing that it's continuing to keep going. Uh, you have... Uh, a time bomb, the fourth time bomb of the tour. I, I like seeing that back in. I'd rather have a time bomb than a you and me. I'd rather have a time bomb than a shaking like a monkey or a seven. So I'd, I'd prefer that to be the, the big whiskey song or two that they pick versus some of the other ones that have been overplayed. Uh, and, you know, there's other songs you can check out the set list on dmbalmanac.com. But the overall sound of the show... It sounded so great for night one. We get a Granny Stay uh, ending, which I said um, in DMB Family, which is one of the sites that I, I interact on uh, for Dave Matthews Band fandom. Uh, I said, look, uh, the you know, someone asked, what are your expectations or predictions for this show? I'm like, hey, the, the closer can't get any worse than the last show. Shake me like a monkey as far as the full band show. Uh, we've had some Dave and Tim, some other stuff in between, but I was like, it, it only can go up, but you know, it's nice when you end on a stay, you have a granny stay combo. I love both of those songs, especially when the lovely ladies are not there. Uh, no offense, uh, but anyway, uh, great way to end that first show. Then we get to show number two, and again, we get some tour debuts, we get some surprises. We also don't get any repeats. What's been happening for some of these two night stands you have a Samurai Cop played twice. I believe it was like again and again it was played twice. Uh, one of the other uh, two-night stands. So there's no repeats. You go to both shows in Colorado, you get 
uh, you know, two different shows with not, not nothing is the same. Uh, but we get a tour debut in Superstition, and before that, we get a tour debut in Liberation of Write a Song. Um, now, I still have to hear high-quality versions of these, so I'm really couch-touring it by just looking at the set. But, shoot, you put Write a Song and you put Superstition in between 41, a, a tour debut sandwich in between 41, I could dig that, okay? Um, I also... I uh, thought I saw some notes about Seek Up, the way it ended and transitioned into Satellite was pretty cool, I heard. I'll have to hear that. Uh, we get Samurai Cop, you know, 34 of 34, the 34th playing of the of that uh, song there. And, um, okay, they got they got seven back in there as well, but hey, it is what it is. Like, you know, I, I'm not a fan of, of seven being played because it's been overplayed, uh, but hey, only big whiskey song that's played so you get a, a lot more touches of other stuff uh nancy's into so right i'm interested to hear that uh well actually it's or this this is, sounds like a dope run uh you have here on now which is just an amazing beautiful acoustic uh experience live which i got in spack here on out write a song 41 superstition nancy's to so right uh that seems like a nice little run, and I like looking for those runs in the albums, the studio albums, and also the live shows. That's a that's a run that I'm not going to the bathroom for. Then you get a Come Tomorrow and then song that, that Jane likes, and maybe I go to the bathroom during Jane. Um, or Come, Come Tomorrow is a pretty, it's a, it's a nice song. Um, because I've heard it, I would go to the bathroom probably then, but if it was the first time I was hearing it, I, I would stay. Um, and, uh, she, you know, crash, she ants marching. We get a, some devils tripping Billy's ending. Um, I love some devil in that, that E1 spot of the encore and tripping Billy's isn't my favorite closer, but it's a beautiful song to end a set. Um, there's many other stuff I'd rather hear, uh, close, but it's a beautiful song. It's a beautiful song. It, it's appropriate to close the show. It's not shake me like a monkey. Uh, so I, that's definitely dope. Uh, so what I want to talk about really uh, now that we've gone over the shows is I really think that for the future of this band, these three outside of the gorge, which is his own little special event. I really think the band should only be playing two weekend shows for a weekend. Um, I was disappointed a little bit with with. Um, how many times this band has had like a three night run? And this is because of Dave's voice and also just in general, Carter's older, Dave is older. Uh, you know, Stefan is just Stefan. He's younger. He, I think he's still, he's still good to go and he doesn't sing. But for those who have to sing and harmonize, uh, for a buddy strong who every day off is a new day to learn something new, these three night stands, some of them plan, some of them not plan. They gotta. I, I think next year they they gotta they gotta cut this out. Um, and this was my own one of my only disappointments with uh, going to SPAC. You know, being ex expect, expecting a double encore or something very magical. Um, they played three shows that weekend. So if we go to SPAC weekend, you have SPAC night one, you have SPAC night two, and then you have Quebec. The, uh, those are three straight shows. Um, and to me, when they do that, Dave has to rest his voice. You're not going to get a Halloween. You're not going to get something crazy. Now, he, they did two-step, and he did it great. But at the same time, Halloween is it just does something different to the voice. It's a, a, a more demanding song. But I, I guarantee you, we would have gotten a double encore July 14th. That's That was th a three-night stand. All right. We go to, let's go back. Uh, to the Chicago weekend, and the same thing, we get a three-night stand, uh, two Chirac's, and then we get one Milwaukee. And again, those type of weekends, someone's going to suffer. The first couple shows or the last show of that weekend, look, Dave's voice is just at a, at a different, at a different um, level right now as far as it's been through everything and he's he's not using drugs 
for his voice as he mentioned um and you know he's trying to do more natural stuff he's trying to work with rab who's a great vocal coach but we can't do this so my solution is this first off there should only be if possible outside of the gorge only two shows on a weekend a, a friday saturday uh a saturday sunday if like something scheduling wise doesn't work out with the venue because uh, there's a lot of shows that are coming into these venues now. Rap shows are getting into these amphitheaters now. So it just only should be ideally two shows for the weekend. And then maybe you have one in the middle. I also think the more rest, the better. My ideal schedule would be two shows and then three to four days off. Two shows, three to four days off. You're going to have exceptions. You're going to have tonight show, you know, appearances, fundraisers, whatever. But those are different than a full band show in front of thousands of fans. Uh, so I, I really think that, you know, there needs to be change here as I adjust my power here. But I really think there needs to be change to this the, the format of a DMB uh, tour. And I'm not going to be upset if the band doesn't tour as much to me and just... Bear with me here. My phone's about to die. Okay. Oops. Just give me one second, folks. Anyway, uh, what I was trying to say uh, is th there needs to be more breaks. There needs to be more uh, cushioning some of these weekends because then you get the best of the band. If you look at uh, a Deer Creek and what they got, and there's a break between that, the 7-6, seven, 7-7, seven, seven, and the next show's in Toronto, you're going to get a better show if Dave doesn't have to do three in a row. Um, so I really think that should be something moving forward is, look, we got to do this. And a, a show like Alabama, uh, Orange Beach, you know, if you were there, I'm sure you had a great time. But as someone who listened to it, uh, who sees Chester Copperpot uh, 5, who is a very critical um, and, and, and part of what the live experience is on YouTube for fans who want to listen to live content. Uh, shout out to Copper Pot. But when he is on Twitter uh, being upset about a choice on Sirius XM, you know that it's something serious because he really tries to be neutral and give you the content, give you the history. When he's complaining on Twitter, you know that they messed up with A, picking that that for the for the concert series like just trying to give a cheap throwaway one hey you guys get it now oh, you didn't hear it you missed it that sunday show well look we're gonna rebroadcast it on the friday when there's no tour like it, it really says a lot about um how bad that show sounded and it's it's not necessarily the you know dave's fault he was exhausted and his voice was is was shot and the band itself, they were exhausted and they were shot. And they're, again, they're not getting any younger. But I really think that moving forward, there's got to be stuff done. If you're going to reschedule a show, don't reschedule it and, and have it be a travel day, per se. I don't know what else they could have done. They may have been better just better off just canceling the show. Um, although some fans, I'm sure if you were there, you probably wanted to just at least hear them. But at the same time, the the quality that you got, even if you enjoyed it, there were, you know, the average show was, was better than that show. But it's tough. You know, you got to try to do what you can just to be there for the fans. There were probably people who lived in that area that still wanted to go. Um, some people had vacations from other parts of the country and they, they couldn't make it. But, you know, they had to do what they had to do. But moving forward, they got to give Dave the rest. They got to do more. He, you know, these guys are getting to their fifties and sixties. Uh, outside of uh, Stefan, who's still in his forties, I believe. So that's all I got for today. Let me know what you guys think. 
uh, we'll be uh, anticipating the Gorge weekend coming up here and see what they play. I really hope as well that, that Dave's voice uh, is able to get through this last leg of the tour. And if need be, if need be, again, I know there's the, the high, high rumors of a winter tour. Hopefully that is brief. Uh, hopefully there isn't no there isn't an extended winter into you know next year's tour. I think that rest is key for this man. When they come back from a break, they don't have rust. They actually feel fresh. Okay, and we saw that with with these shows in Denver. It's your boy Conserviz34. Follow me on Twitter at Conserviz34. Definitely like, comment, subscribe. Thank you guys for the support. I appreciate all of it, and I'm out.